Hello everyone, I'm Dad Machine and we are back to bring you another installment of Classic Gaming. Here, I present to you a full walkthrough of Super Mario Bros. 3 for the NES. This video will cover the first world of the game. This game has really stood the test of time, and even though I already played the game on the channel, I feel as if I should actually give it a proper playthrough this time around. So with that being said, let's get started. To walk, press left or right on the D-pad. To crouch, press and hold down on the D-pad. Crouching is very useful. Use it to dodge enemies and their projectiles. Sometimes you can use crouching in tandem with running to slide under narrow areas. While walking, press and hold the B button to run. Mario will automatically build his meter while running. If you charge his meter to the max while running with Raccoon or Tanuki Mario, you can fly for a short period of time. To jump, press the A button. Use the jump to reach higher places and in some cases to avoid the enemy. The jump button is pressure sensitive meaning that pressing the A button lightly will allow Mario to execute a short jump. If you long press the A button, Mario will do a longer extended jump. To pick up a Koopa shell, walk into it while holding the B button. Release the B button to kick the turtle shell. This technique is beneficial and can be used to hit enemies in various item blocks that's low on the ground. Along the way, there's items you can obtain by hitting item blocks. Depending on the item collected, it will allow Mario to take damage without losing a life or fire a projectile. This item is the most common power-up. The Super Mushroom allows Mario to become Super Mario, who is both stronger and more durable. Taking a hit will revert him back into his base form. Speaking of mushrooms, this green one will give you an extra life. This will turn Mario into Raccoon Mario, who is basically Super Mario but with the ability to fly. Press the B button to perform a tail smack. The tail smack is a close range attack. While in midair, tap the A button to glide. Gliding is very useful, especially when jumping over bottomless gaps and pits. To fly, run until the P meter is full. Now press and hold the A button. At the peak of your flight, Keep tapping the A button to slow down your descent. This will turn Mario into Tanuki Mario. And just like the raccoon leaf, the Tanuki suit will allow Mario to fly and perform a tail smack. However, it has one more ability. Mario can turn into a statue by pressing down plus the B button. In this state, enemies can't harm you, but you can only hold its form for a little while. The frog costume makes swimming easier, but on land, the Super Mario Brothers can jump higher with it. Also, you can't walk while in the frog costume, you can only hop. This is one of Mario classic power-ups. When collected, it turns Mario into Fire Mario, in which case he can throw fireballs. To shoot a fireball, press the B button. So, Hammer Mario is basically the OP version of Fire Mario, but instead of throwing fireballs, he tosses hammers. Also, the hammers are even stronger than fireballs. From my understanding, it's possible to take out a boom boom with a single hammer. But perhaps the greatest feature about the Hammer Brother power up is its defense. 
If you press down on the D-pad to crouch, Mario will become impervious to fireball attacks. So, the last item i like to cover is the star. This item grants Mario with the power of invincibility and complete protection from enemies. But there are certain things that can still unalive Mario such as falling in a pit, falling in lava, getting crushed in an auto-scrolling level, and running out of time. Now there's more items to cover, but we will cover them over the course of the game. This game has 8 worlds to conquer, so let's get to it. Start by going to 1-1 and press the A button to start. This level is not difficult and is a great way to get acquainted with the controls. Go to the right, watch out for the Goomba, and let's grab the Super Mushroom here. Make sure to avoid the Piranha Plant in the pipe and keep moving. Now, whenever you see a white platform, it means we can fall behind it. So stand on top of it and crouch down to execute this ability. See? So I will show you why this skill is necessary in a few. If you stay behind the bushes here, you can avoid the Paragoombas. So let's do just that and take flight. Collect the one-up mushroom and continue to the right. Take flight again and we should be able to reach a warp pipe by gliding to it. Now press down to enter. So nothing much is going on here. Just a bit of coin collecting. Now head out through the opposite pipe. At the end of the level, you can get a star card if you hit the gold box at top speed. Also, this level is easy. Make your way to the right. And at this point, we can use the Goombas to gain unlimited 1-ups. In order for this to work, we need a Raccoon Leaf power-up. Now allow the Goombas to walk towards you from the left. Now jump on the first Goomba, but make sure to hold the jump button for maximum height. Now float down towards the next Goomba and rinse and repeat. The 1-up effect starts after the ninth Goomba has been slain. Now. If you touch the ground at any point while doing this, you have to start over. So hit the block here for a raccoon leaf if needed. Be careful of the Paragoomba and let's get ready to make our way into the second warp pipe. Slide underneath here and hit this to reveal P-Block. Now avoid the piranha plant and make your way inside. Wait for the P-Block effect to wear off and grab all the coins here. Now make an exit at the left pipe. Now let's continue to the right. Be mindful of the Goombas since this level has a lot of them. Hit the second note here for a raccoon leaf if needed. Also, you can slide down slopes like this one by holding down on the D-pad. Make your way over the gap and the power star is in the third note block. Now while invincible, quickly make your way to the gold block to finish the level. So, this level has the first warp whistle to acquire. You can follow the Koopa shell and take out the Boomerang Koopa with it. At this point, kick the red Koopa shell to the left to create an opening here. Now hop down and hit the invisible music note. Now jump off of it to go to coin heaven. So Coin Heaven is an also scrolling area. About halfway through is a 1-up hidden in a block near the top of the screen. 
Once you collect it, make your way to the right and exit through the warp pipe. Now, we're right at the end of the level, but we need to double back first and head left. Find a white platform and crouch on top of it to fall behind to the background. Now head all the way to the right to find the first walk whistle. So, the warp whistle is an item that allows us to skip worlds, and if my memory serves me right, I believe you need at least two warp whistles to skip to world 8. There are three warp whistles in all, and two of them being in world 1, and the last one being in world 2. We will collect all three, but we will not use them in this run. So, this is the first real auto scrolling level of the game. Also, we can unlock the white mushroom house from this level. To do that, do as I do here and gather at least 44 coins. We have to navigate and keep Mario above the bottomless pit. Make sure to take your time and plan your jumps accordingly. Using the raccoon leaf here is a complete godsend. So use it to slow your fall and to make your jumps easier. When you jump on the moving platforms, make sure not to stay on for too long since they will fall shortly after. Now grab the pillar of coins and get ready to collect more coins from the item block nearby. And once you see the raid paratrooper, we should be at the warp pipe that takes us to the exit. Yes, now hit the gold box to finish the level. So, before we head to the first fortress, let's play our first mini game. Whenever you go to the ace symbol, it means we have to try to match up the pitcher to win. And as you can see here, I got the mushroom pitcher. In any case, a mushroom pitcher is worth two ups, a flower pitcher is worth three, and a star pitcher is worth five ups. Here is where we will collect the second warp whistle. Go to the right. Make sure to avoid the fireballs as you jump over the lava. Yeah, we have to take our time and make sure to keep the raccoon leaf. We need that to make it where we're going. All right, so be mindful of the rotor disc traps here and to my knowledge, they can't be defeated, so keep moving. So at this point, Jump on the dry bones, then quickly use the area to run and fly upwards against the right wall. With Mario off screen, keep holding to the right and soon Mario will find a secret entrance. This room has a second walk whistle. If we continued on the proper path, we would have ended up facing the mini boss known as Boom Boom. Before our next level, let's go to the Hammer Brother on the map. 
Defeat him to unlock the contents of the treasure. Now with the Hammer Brother defeated, it's time to journey to 1-5, which is the first underground level of the game. Slide down the hill to take out the Buzzy Beetles. These enemies are more durable than Koopas and fireballs don't work on them. From here, keep hitting right and jump at this point to hit the invisible music block. Now jump on it to go to Coin Heaven. The layout of this area is similar to the one from 1-3. Make sure to collect the one up from the top of this area if you have a raccoon power up. Now let's continue to the right and go down the slope. Be mindful of the piranha plants as you make your way to the war pipe at the end. Okay, so that was a nice short level. Honestly, I consider this level to be the first true platforming one. Okay, so head right. We have to make sure to execute our jumps carefully here since the stage has no ground at all. And once again, the raccoon tail is our greatest ally here. So we have to carefully drop in the opening to the bottom block and if you have raccoon power, it makes the task easier. Now ride a platform while avoiding the paratroopers. Make sure to jump off before it falls here. Now hop over to the moving platform, then jump to the one that moves vertically. Wait for this platform to move near the bottom and when it gets to the screen right, jump off of it to make it to the other side. Now hit the gold box to finish your level. The level put me in the mind of 1-4 a lot, except it does not auto-scrolls. Now, with all the levels defeated, the only thing that's left to do in World 1 is to defeat the boss. To do so, let's go to the castle. So, all of the airships are pretty much the last line of defense for each world and all of the airships are also scrolling. We have to make our way through while avoiding cannon shots and thruster fire amongst other traps. Also, be prepared for bullet bills and rotating cannons along the way. This particular airship is easy to navigate being that it's the first one and it gives you a haze up on what to expect on the next one. So we finally reached the end here, and it's time to face Larry Cooper in a boss battle. Larry will shoot loops at you with the magic wand. Avoid them and jump on his head. Larry will then go inside his shell and try to pounce on you. When he comes out, jump on his head again. You have to jump on him three times to score the win. 